Hi everyone. On February 10th, the Holy Orthodox Church commemorates the memories of the Holy Virgin Martyrs, Inatha and Valentina, and the martyr Paul. Now, Inatha was someone who hailed from Gaza. And as it happened, she was simply attending a meeting where some of the Holy Scriptures were being read. This was about the year 308. And soldiers burst in on this meeting and separated all of the people, gravely injuring some of them and causing much damage to their feet and even to their eyes. Now, Enitha was taken before the judge of that area, whose name was Firminian, and Firminian was a vicious, almost monster, in terms of his persecution of Christians. And he offered her the chance to recant against her belief in Christ. And of course, she absolutely refused. She would have nothing to do with that. And so, almost in a wild rage, it is said, he took her and had her elevated up on a pole and began injuring her side with spears and other sorts of instruments. Then, as if to add great insult to already horrible injury, he stripped her down to the waist and had her paraded through the towns and marketplaces of Caesarea, threatening even previously to her that he would have her ensconced in a brothel. Now, one of the people who happened to be watching these horrible activities going on was another virgin named Valentina, a very faithful and devoted uh, follower of Jesus Christ. She watched with such horror that finally she herself could not constrain herself anymore and yelled out to them, How long will you keep doing these things to my sister. Of course, she met sister in Christ. And immediately, Firminian had her taken also and bound. And she also was subjected to terrible tortures on each one of her sides, so that all there thought that Firminian simply had a lust for the flesh of the woman falling off of her body. Well, as it turns out, Firminian, even though the two beloved virgin martyrs survived all this, didn't know what to do with them. So he finally decided to have them burned together in the fire. There was another man at this time named Paul, and he also was condemned to death only by the sword and felt honored that he was to die along with these two holy virgin martyrs. And Paul, asking for a bit of a respite before his execution, which was granted, began to pray for all that were concerned. He prayed for the conversion of the Jews very loudly. He proclaimed even more loudly for the conversion of the Samaritans and for all of the Gentiles and asked that the Lord's blessing come upon all of them and lead them to repentance. And then he even began praying for Firminius and those others who were in charge, who were about to inflict death and had already inflicted tortures on these people in the loudest voice possible so that all around him were just absolutely astonished that this man who was going to an ignominious death unfairly and unreasonably could pray so greatly for those who were persecuting him. In the end, he was beheaded by the sword, and the virgin martyrs perished by the flame, which is one of the most horrible deaths that you can imagine. Yet none of them ever, even briefly, began somehow to think that in order to save their lives by denying their Lord that this was something worthwhile. They simply did not consider it. And when you consider what the punishment all started out from, simply meeting together to read some of the scriptures that were available to them or that perhaps they had come upon uh, suddenly since it was the year 308 and scriptures were few and far between, 
They were simply wanting to get instruction in a quiet and peaceable manner when these brutes noticed what was going on and then pulled them out and decided to end their lives. Stories like this, particularly from the early years of Christianity, I think can give us great, great hope in terms of the faith that they proclaimed. The Spirit moved mightily in those days, even as it does today, although we too often ignore it. And these holy martyrs, even for doing this, the simplest things, were called to account before their great God and Savior Jesus Christ and pass the test very, very easily. We must also understand that if something that simple can cause people of the world, people opposed to the Christian faith to turn against us, that we also must be prepared, that we need to see all of those Orthodox Christians whom we share the body and blood with worldwide as our true brothers and sisters in Christ. And that if something happens to them, we must speak up for them. We must assume their burdens. And in many cases, we must share their fates also. In this month of February, where Valentine's Day has become something uh, sentimental and saccharine, it's good for us to think back on the Holy Virgin Martyr Valentina and understand that this sort of thing is what comes forth from a heart that is filled with the love of God, which expands not only to fellow Christians, but also to the world 